I'm going to talk a little bit about promises. So what exactly is a promise? A uh, promise represents the eventual result of an asynchronous operation. Um, some people like to think of them as a synchronous look for an asynchronous operation. So what exactly defines a promise? I think when promises first came out, there was a little bit of um, confusion. Some people write them one way, other people write them another. But this is kind of what we've kind of come down to agree upon for what exactly is a promise. So a promise can only have one of three states. It can either be pending, fulfilled, or rejected. Um, it's technically an object. And it's basically an object that promises to eventually just do something. It can be a value, it can be uh, an asynchronous call, anything at all. Uh, once a promise is settled, it can never change states. So you can pretty much count on once it gets to one of these states, it's going to remain that way um, for the rest of its life. Uh, every, every promise has a dot then method. They all come with two callbacks, um, success callback, an error callback. Um, they can also resolve to another promise, which is kind of an interesting thing, which I'll get into later on. Um, I always th kind of thought promises always resolve to a value, which then could either be resolved, passed on to another promise, but the fact that you can then create a new promise from that is a pretty cool little thing. So it's actually very big in, um, in Angular. If you guys use $HTTP, they're always returning promises and flattening and things like that. All right, so. So like I said earlier, um, when promises first came out, things got a little bit, a little bit crazy. Um, so they, now they have this standardized uh, A spec. You can read all about this. It's basically anything anybody wants to write a promise library, you pretty much have to follow these guidelines if you want to be considered uh, A spec compliant. Um, it's generally for making promises uh, easier to read, easier to write. And it makes a transition between promise libraries. If you're ever using more than one in a certain project, a lot of things that we use will implement promises that you're not aware of. As long as everything is pretty much A spec compliant, you can be pretty sure that you're going to get the same results. So what's the point of all this? You may be asking yourself that. Uh, well, you know, this is the thing that people like to refer to as callback hell. Um, me personally, I know we learned promises pretty early on. So I never really did too much of this, but I've certainly been down this road before. I'm sure you guys have. You know, you can see a certain function has a callback, which returns a result, and then you're checking for an error. And if that has an error, then it throws that error, and, and on and on and so forth. This can get really, really deep and really, really sideways. Um, let's see. Let's see. Oh. oh, definitely. The uh, error handling here, as you can see, is like, uh, a lot of repetitive code. Um, sometimes you can't even tell where exactly in this you're getting an error from. So you end up putting a lot of console logs and it just, it can get really, really messy really quick. So we've got promises. How can we use them? Here's an example of a, like, a better structure, as you can see. So you define a promise up top. Um, in the done function, you have your callback, which then can actually return another async callback, which eventually will return a promise to the following function. So on and so off, so on and so forth, until you can see at the bottom, that's when you have your error handler, which is honestly probably one of my favorite parts about uh, promises, how you can put all your error handling at the bottom, handle it one clean, uh, easy to read place. Uh, so here's an example of what not to do. So we've talked about how great promises are. I think everyone agrees they're a great thing that we all should use, but like anything, they can be used wrong. So this is an example, and I actually had done something like this when I first learned promises. Um, you know, you have a function call here, and you have your dot then, and then inside of that, you have a for each, which then, you know, has another dot then, and then you have a catch, and inside that, you have another dot then. So you end up nesting these promises inside of each other, and it almost kind of defeats the whole purpose of them. So if you see anybody doing this, if you're doing this, this is definitely something that you should not want to do. Hopefully none of you guys are, are using it this way. Uh, error handling. Like I said, error handling is a big reason why we use promises, not only for linearity, keeping things lined up, making it easier to read, but it centralizes all of your error, error handling, if you want it to be, in one place. Obviously, if you need to know when a certain error happens, you can always put dot catches in the middle of a promise chain. That's totally cool, too. Um, these are just basically three different ways you can define an error handler. Um, this is probably the most common way. 
you list out two functions next to each other. The first one is your success handler. The second one would be your error handler. I don't personally prefer that method. I think it gets a little hard to read because you're going to have functions comma delineated. Kind of gets hard to see what ends where. And then the, the bottom two are pretty much the same thing. Uh, if you set the first argument to null, your second argument becomes your error handler. And dot catch is basically another way to write that. The dot catch is now uh, supported in ES6, so there's kind of really no, way, no reason you'd ever really need to uh, avoid dot catch. Now, let's see what else. So, like I said, promises in ES6. Uh, promises can also be written kind of like in a constructor format that you guys are all used to. You can use the new, the new command, pass the function that you want. You can then take that promise. You could save it to a variable. You can export it to another file. Um, that's a really useful feature when you're doing something on the back end. If you have a promise in one file, you want to resolve it somewhere else. You can save it to a file. You can export it, import it, pretty much whatever you want. Something that I think a lot of people don't really realize we can do. Traditional methods that we're all aware of, uh, dot then obviously. Dot all, it's another one that I have heard of, but I had never really used too much um, until I started looking at this. Really cool feature, you can basically take an array of promises. You can call dot all on them and it'll basically uh, resolve each promise in the array. It won't ever resolve until everything has, the whole promise won't resolve until every promise in the array has resolved. And if any one of them were to fail, the whole promise is rejected. So this is just a little diagram, as you can see. Talks about promise A. You uh, resolve with a value, reject with a reason. You can then resolve if you want to and get out, go back to an error handler. You can recover from errors, pass things along, return a new promise. All things like that. I think this is a really nice little flowchart to help you see exactly how things move around. So I'll just talk quickly talk about Bluebird. Um, like I mentioned, ES6 has a lot of uh, the newer promise features built into it already. I think this is why libraries like this were originally written, because a lot of these things you couldn't do. But with the ES6, a lot of that stuff you can do. But there's a few things that you can do at uh, Bluebird that you can't normally do with uh, ES6. Four of them that I chose that are really cool are dot .map, dot .reduce, dot .each, and sum. So very similar to array methods. Um, map is basically, it returns a map function. And the promise won't fulfill until all the map promises are fulfilled. And if any one of them is rejected, the whole promise is rejected as well. Similar to dot .all, but you actually get a return back into a new array. So that's going to be super helpful. Reduce, again, kind of like an array method of reduce. If you're getting a value back from your promises, you can uh, pass it into the next function call. You can you know, build that, subtract it, whatever you want to do with it. Keep a value running and reduce it down to a single value. Um, dot each. Dot each, dot each is pretty cool because it's basically um, kind of like you know, it's an array of promises again. But rather than this one, each promise is going to resolve sequentially. And if any of the promises uh, fail or are rejected throughout that process, the, pro the, uh, the promise is rejected. And dot sum. Dot sum is pretty cool because dot sum basically you can also again have an array of promises, but you can also give it a number. So think of it like a counter. You can say if you have an array of four promises and you set your counter to two, as soon as two of them are resolved or rejected, it will give you a result based on wherever you're at there now. It's almost like a, like a break clause, which I thought was pretty neat. So. Uh, Promiseify all, another one that was uh, brought in with Bluebird. This is a really cool one. You can pass in something like FS. You can customize your suffix. It'll go through the object, it'll iterate it, find any synchronous, any synchronous methods that are in there, and basically promiseify them. You know, it'll also append, you know, normally I believe it's async, but this is an example you can customize it however you want. So what makes promises unique? Like I said, um, they, uh, they can return another, a new promise, and that's a really, really powerful feature. Um, that's the reason why you can dot then off things, you can chain them together, uh, go from one promise to the next pretty seamlessly. So, uh, like I said, uh, oh, I mentioned that word flattening earlier. Let's talk about that real quickly. Um, a promise can do one of three things. It can return a response, throw an exception, or return a new promise. Flattening is basically the process when you take one promise and return it from another. Um, that's it. Final thoughts. I just, uh, you know, I chose promises because um, they're kind of one of those things that I always, I kind of knew how to do, but I didn't really know how they were working, and I knew just the bare bones. So I, I took this as an opportunity to learn a little bit more, and I hope I taught you guys a couple things too. So thank you.